This is James Calm, the guy on the bike, welcoming back our worldwide viewership for another half ass production. Well, we're out here in Mojo section, East Williamsburg. We're going to take a quick run through and look at a recent show by Adam Simon. And maybe we'll run on and see some other things. Stay tuned. Now, Adam Simon is a longtime Williamsburg artist. And uh, most of these pieces he gets from stock photographs that are produced for advertisements and different types of things. This particular installation is a collection of his stencils that he's used over about 15 years. Now we're talking to the artist, Adam Simon. Why don't you give us a little uh, kind of description about your, your piece here that you've installed and uh, some of the ideas you've been working with. Okay, the camera always held this close. It's, uh, yes. It feels like I'm ready for my close-up. Well, you got to see the back side um, of your head here. Uh, okay, well, Let's talk this about is, the, the large installation piece with your, your yeah, stencils yeah. that you've used. Okay, the thing about this is that this is Pocket Utopia. Pocket Utopia is more than a gallery. It's a, it's a social space. It's a... It's uh, an art project by uh, artist Austin Thomas. So uh, I didn't want to just put up a painting show, even though I'm primarily a painter. Um, and then I have this um, archive of images that I've been collecting for over 15 years. And these are from stock photos? It's, all, it's not just stock photography, but it's like the low end of stock photography. The, really the low end? Well, what I'm calling the low end. It's like the very commercial stuff where it's almost always, it's usually models that are posed in uh, everyday situations. So I take those images and it started when I was doing um, magazine production work and I would have a lot of downtime and these catalogs were laying around that the designers were using. To, for source material, and um, I started overlaying acetate over these books and then cutting out the figures. So you're actually more interested in using them as uh, kind of abstract designs rather than um, maybe something that you could create a narrative and, and use them in a more figurative way? Uh, well, you or know, you sort of balancing between of the two things, sort of a half narrative and half abstract? Yeah, you know what, for me what I like is the fact that I, they, when I paint them, I'm painting abstractly. They're, they're basically abstract paintings in terms of how I'm painting them because I'm not rendering, I'm not uh, making those kinds of figure ground decisions that a figurative painter would make. Uh, I'm applying paint in the way that an abstract painter applies paint. And I'm also making decisions in the way that an abstract painter makes decisions. But because I'm using these stencils that I make. Let's take a look at some of the stencils here. Yeah, so these are... Uh, this is a beautiful installation. I like this, especially the way the colors sort of... Uh, bump up when you get to the center of the, uh, the piece here. It's very nice. Well, it's called Golden Age. I've got another question for you. Yeah. Um, you were one of the uh, people that, well, I guess originated Four Walls. You were involved in that. Yeah. I, and yeah. you said you saw the movie, the debut of uh, Marcin Romaki's Brooklyn D DIY. DIY, yeah. What did you think of that? Oh, I love the film. I mean, um for one thing, Four Walls gets treated very well. You know, Absolutely, that was sort of the entry point for the whole narrative there. Yeah, people talked about Four Walls in a way that made me feel proud of it. You know, it was kind of, it was a great period in my life and uh, it was a great collaboration with Mike Ballou. Um, and also, at one time, Amy Silman and Claire Pentecost. Uh, Ward Shelley was spending a lot of time there too, right? Uh, you know, Ward was instrumental, Joe Amrine was instrumental. Um, there were a lot of people that, it was, it was such a, you know, it was a community thing. How about your project with the Adopting Artworks program? You want to That's, talk about that too? It's kind of an extension of Four Walls in a funny way, you know? It's sort of like they're both um, projects that, uh, kind of use art as a way of connecting people and um, as a kind of almost like a jumping off point. That's great. Yeah, because you don't, it's bypassing the money issue because the artists are not getting any money for their work. They're determining who they want to own the work and they own it permanently. It's not, it's not a loan. But, I, and they, it comes to an exchange, a kind of um, emailing exchange that happens through the site with the artist, and the artist chooses, to that, that, which is kind of unusual. You know? Okay, give us that website one more time. It's the Fine Art Adoption Network, and it's 
fineartadoption.net. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. You're welcome. Okay. James. Good luck. Okay, well, that was Adam Simon's show at Pocket Utopia out here in Bushwick, East Williamsburg. We're going to jump on the bike. We're going to head back down to downtown Williamsburg, and I'm going to try to get in and see the boiler. North 14th Street. Ooh. Cherry 55 Ford. The boiler. Well, some very impressive space he's got here. Oh man. Looks like there's Jill right there. John Shipper's the artist of this piece. Well, looks like he still needs to patch a few holes in the ceiling up there. This is Arctic Ice Project by Treveus Strayhands. And what he's got here is a huge block of ice. He'd actually gone up into the Arctic and cut out this block of ice. And now he's preserving it inside this portable refrigerating chamber. And supposedly this is all powered with solar power. This is a painting by Yoon Lee. This is a real tour de force of technical expertise. When I first saw these, I thought that she was using some kind of huge silk screens, but it was explained to me that this is actually all done with squeeze bottles and various techniques by hand. This is Jonathan Shippers. 215 points of view. And that is a lot of videos. A lot of monitors there. This is Jonathan right there, I believe. Let's see if we can get him to talk. <laughs> Tell us about your piece, 215 points of view. Sure. You can look through it at any point, see to the other side. So you're always, um, I mean, really it's about the, the medium of video itself. Um, and surveillance, isn't there? Aren't these surveillance cameras that are involved with this yeah, too? Yeah, they're all surveillance cameras. There's one in between each monitor. Oh, okay. But, uh, the image that you know this camera seeing is being shown on the screen on the other side. Uh, well, there's a show coming up here right after this one, the first of May, that uh, uh, no internal combustion, but uh, oh, something shocking though, no it's doubt. It's gonna right? be. I'm excited. It's gonna be two All pieces. Right. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you. All right. And now we're talking to Joe Armrein. Tell us about tell us about your new project here, the boiler. Boiler is a very exciting new project. It's an amazing space, probably the best space in New York City. Yes. I think you've got the highest ceilings for everybody except maybe the Museum of Modern Art and the Grand Atrium. That's right. Well, you know, we're doing our best here, but for Williamsburg, I think it's, and for New York, I think it's an exciting new space. New possibilities for uh, artists, for, for collectors, for uh, curators, and uh, I'm very excited to be part of it. This is a fantastic opening show. What are you going to do to follow up? Well, or is that going to be a secret? <laughs> well, we're keeping it open a little bit to keep it exciting for ourselves. In between shows, uh, we want to open it up to uh, panel discussions, maybe some film screening. All right, thank you, Joe. You're welcome. And good luck with the boiler. Thank you. This is James Calm reporting on boiler. Thanks, Kate.